An urban search and rescue team needs to be, uh, needs to deploy at a moment's notice and they need to be confident of their skills and capable. We can do individual and position specific training on our own, but at least once a year we need to get together as a group and practice together. Today we are practicing a full scale deployment of our forces to a site where there has been an explosion at a plant. This will involve uh, rescues in a hazardous chemical environment, concrete breaching. First, we have to find them. We use canines and cameras to find our victims. Then we'll have to breach concrete, enter confined spaces with hazardous atmospheres to get them out. And we will also have to shore up buildings to uh, make them safe for entry for search and rescue. And we'll have to conduct rope rescues from heights as well. We also, we uh, did this for the first time last year, and one of the big uh, areas of improvement we noticed was that it took, uh, operationally, we're as good as anybody in the business, but it took us over an hour last year to get on track to where we could deploy our people operationally. So this year we practiced our point of departure procedures where we get ourselves organized and properly equipped and ready to go prior to getting to the hot zone. So not only will you see our structural collapse folks, you'll see our canine assets. Uh, we actually have our incident support team, which is a management team that's at headquarters at the fire marshal's office in Baton Rouge managing this incident. That team is sustained by almost 30 people and their job is not only to manage the incident, but to manage the duration. So that team has actually stood up to work for two to four weeks, uh, worrying about not only the daily missions, but everything that our team members need to safely rehab and safely go out the next day and do their job. To be prepared for a deployment, because when we deploy, you know, we're integ integrated together. So it's better to integrate early and learn the mistakes and the things that we, you know, we find out on deployments a lot. Because uh, the past exercises we've done, you know, we see problems. Sometimes the same problems come up on a deployment. So, and you've been there, you know, so this is a good time. And to get to, to know people, their limitations, what they can do, and to recognize the face. It's good when you get to the deployment, you know what a guy can do, you know what he's capable of, and you worked together before, and that's the good part. What we're trying to refine is we, we have a, a new bunch of, of individuals and we're trying to further their training. And with the older guys, uh, we're just trying to refresh our skills. We're mostly just trying to learn how the system works and see if we can identify any problems and work out the kinks now. So if, God forbid, we do have to go anywhere, we. We've had the training and we understand how the situation plays out. The canines are extremely important because they provide a service that us as humans cannot do, and that's their nose. They can clear lots of territory fast. They don't have to actually see the victim or the uh, uh, searcher, the people we're looking for and they tell it with their nose and then they let us know. And so that saves on time and equipment. Well, this is a tremendous success story. You know, we're 12 years into building a USAR response team, Urban Search and Rescue for the state of Louisiana. We have almost 250 members of our team, which consists of state and mostly local fire departments who are at a call and ready to respond when there's a, a water event, a structural collapse, or any type of a disaster for that manner to bring people out of harm's way and bring them to safety. I mean, I think it's just a testament of, of what the fire service's mentality is, and that's working together. You know, we've built these teams on very little money, but a tremendous amount of goodwill, a tremendous amount of passion, uh, and really a, a spirit of, we're here to protect our citizens. So there's been no stops uh, on, on that, that rim, and if you look at our successes and the reality, people are alive today uh, because of what this task force has done over the last 12 years.